So let's start off by looking at flow networks. Here I've drawn a basic flow network, and as you can see, it's just a directed graph. However, compared to a directed graph, within a flow network, each edge must have a capacity and a flow. In this case, the graph just has the capacities for each edge. Another thing about flow networks compared to directed graphs is there are two special nodes, one called the source and one called the sink. In this graph, we have the source S on the left and we have the sink T on the right. So, flows in flow networks. So for an example flow F in a flow network G, it is a real valued function and it must satisfy two conditions. The first condition is that for all vertices within the entire collection of vertices, the flow from U to V must be greater than or equal to zero and it must be less than the capacity of the edge between U and V. And then secondly, for all vertices within the entire subset of vertices V, except the sink and the source, the total flow from U to V must equal the total flow from V to U. So here I've drawn another flow network and this time I've actually filled out the flows. So in this case from S to V1 you can see that we have a flow of 10 and the capacity is 18 and from V1 to V2 we have a flow of 10 and the capacity is 10. So for a flow function f the value f is defined as the total sum from S to V minus the total sum of flow from V to S. In this case the, val the value f is equal to the flow from s to v1 plus the flow from s to v3, which in this case is 10 plus 9, which equals 19. Let's move on to look at the max flow problem. So let's move on to talk about the max flow problem. Here I've drawn out a flow network G, which has source s and two sinks, t1 and t2. But if you remember earlier when I mentioned flow networks, a flow network has two special nodes, one source and one sink. So in this case, because we have two sinks, we're going to need to make a thing called a super sink, which is connected to both of these. Just as if we had two sources, it would make a super source, which connects to the two sources. Before adding this super sink, also notice that between V2 and V4, we have multiple edges, when we only really want one. We have an edge with flow 6 going from V2 to V4 and then an edge with flow 8 going from V4 to V2. So let's move on to the fixed version of G. As you can see, I've added the super sink that I was talking about, T. And the values between T1 and T and T2 and T is 100. This is because this, these new values need to be greater than the rest of the flows in the network, so as to the fact that they do not negatively affect the ford Folkestone algorithm later. I've also fixed this issue between V2 and V4 by adding a new vertex V5 and then I've just updated the flow so it goes from V2 to V5 with flow 6 and then from V5 to V4 with flow 6 and I've left the edge from V4 to V2 with flow 8 because now there's only one edge connecting. So the main aim of the max flow problem is we're trying to get the maximum amount of stuff from source S into sync T. So let's move on to talk about the ford fulkerson method itself. So let's look at the algorithm itself. So we have the ford fulkerson method, and we take the graph, the source, and the sink. So we begin, we initialize the overall flow to zero, and while there exists an augmentation path P in the residual network GF, we do the augmentation flow along P. So now I'm going to show you an example so you get a better understanding of this. So I just gave you the algorithm, and you must be wondering what a few of those keywords were, such as the augmentation path. So let's explain this to you by going through the algorithm. So here is a basic flow network. And as you can see, it once again has two sinks, so we're going to need to add a super sink. So in step one, we've added this super sink, T, and we've updated these values. So by looking at this network, we see that we can push a value of 8 across the augmentation path, S to V1 to V2 to V3 to V7 to T. And because 8 is the smallest value, we call this the residual capacity because this really limits how much we can push along this path. So going forwards, we can see that we've now updated this in this F graph. And we show 
that because we've pushed 8 across, we've used 8 out of 12 for the entire capacity. So we've updated each of these values, as you can see. And then all the rest of the values for the rest of the graph that we didn't touch remain at 0. So now taking this, we can take this and move on to a residual network, which is another GF, which we've updated the values. So because we pushed 8 across, we can know we've lost a capacity of 8 on each edge. So going forward, we have a capacity of 4, because we can still push 4 more stuff along. Whereas we've already pushed 8 across, so we have 8 coming back due to it not being available to us anymore. So this has been updated across the line. But as you can see, V3 to V7, it's 0 and then 8 back, because the capacity was 8 and we filled the entire capacity. So looking at this, we can now see that we could then push another 4 going from S to V1, V1 to V2, V2 to V3, V3 to V5, V5 to V6, and then V6 to T. So here we have the updated F graph with that new information. So as you can see, I've pushed an extra 4 across. So now the total capacity from S to V1 is 12 because it is 8 plus 4. And then previously we had 8 on these, so we've added 4. And it's just the same as before, as you can see. And the ones that we haven't touched remain at 0. So carrying on, we've updated these values. And I've just crossed out the edges that we can't access anymore due to them having 0 capacity left. We now see that we can push a value of 4 from S to V4, V4 to V5, V5 to Z, V6, V6 to T. So again, I've updated these changes, as you can see. I'm sure I don't need to explain it again. So we can carry on taking these steps until we reach an endpoint such as this, where we can observe that there are no augmenting paths left. And to find the max flow, what we can do is we add the two values going into the source, here 12 and 7, and the two values coming out of the tap, 8 and 11. And we add 12 and 7, and we add 8 and 11, and we see that it's 19, which is the max flow through the system. Basically, the running time of the algorithm really depends on how we choose our augmenting paths. So here, I've given a good choice of how we choose our augmenting paths. So we start off with this graph. And as you can see, we have vertices with value 800, 700, 1000, and 600. So you can look at this and see that going along the edge from V2 to V1 is just going to slow us down and not help us at all. So we'll start off by going from S to V1, then V1 to T and pushing flow 700 across. So as you can see, I've made the residual network just as we did before in a previous example. And then we move on. We've updated the graph, and we can push a value of 600 from S to V2 and the V2 to T. So again, I've updated the residual network. And then we finish off, and we see that we cannot push any more from V1 to T and V2 to T. So the max flow in the end is equal to 600 plus 700, which equals 1300. So let's move on to talk about the bad choice. Again, we have the same graph with the same flows along each edge. But this time, we're going to constantly choose to push along the edge from V2 to V1. So first of all, we'll push a value 1 from S to V2, V2 to V1, and then V1 to T. And as you can see, I've updated the residual network here to show this. And then we're back to the graph again. So we'll move on and we'll push a value of 1 from S to V1, V1 to V2, and then V2 to T. And we can do this because of backflow, as mentioned earlier. And again, I've updated the residual network to show this. And then we're back to basically where we started, except with a bit of a lower value along S to V2 and V1 to T. So we're going to push a value of 1 from S to V2, V2 to V1, and then V1 to T. And here's the residual network to show that change again. So the problem is, if we keep on doing this, we're going to have 1,300 iterations till we hit the max flow. So to prove the time bound, imagine that each iteration takes E time, where E is the total number of edges in the network. So the flow network increases by at least one unit in each iteration. So for the maximum flow F star, or 1,300 in the, this case, the maximum value of F star denotes a bound in the number of iterations. Henceforth, the total running time is thus big O of the value of F star times E.